Welcome back to Houston Life. Women's History Month is a time to celebrate the courage, strength, and contributions of women who have broken through barriers and helped shape the world into what it is today. Stephanie Suru and Katie Suru are two local women who believe we are all better and stronger when we work together. They took that belief and decided to open a colorful, one-of-a-kind co-working space. I can hear the city calling. This is one of our meeting rooms. Stephanie Suru takes pride in showing off the business she co-founded five years ago. This is our mother's room. We have lots of new mamas in here. This is the RBG room. It's a co-working space in the Lower Heights District created by women for women, an aptly named She Space. Hey, hey. Space, it's a meeting space, an event space. It's just a big community of women. The one world we have here is you have to respect each other. Stephanie's co founder is someone many consider an unlikely business partner, her daughter in law, Katie Suru. Usually people ask me about it. The stereotype is like, you yeah. know, the mother-in-law. Like, no one wants to have to do anything with their mother-in-law, let alone choose to work with them. Even though they are in-laws and now business partners, Katie and Stephanie interact like longtime friends because they are. I've known Katie a long time since she was young. Katie is very intelligent, and I respect her views. Going into business, with any person as a partner mm -hmm. is something you have to think about and, and work on. It's a, real, it's a very serious relationship and we treat it like that and work on it and respect each other. Our perspectives are so different. We balance mm -hmm. each other. Katie always is the voice of reason, which everyone needs um, and it's so welcome and um, she always has, she has a good point. That balance has made the co-working space what it is today, a place where women from all kinds of industries work together under one roof. We have 400 members, and I think on any given day, there could be 50 people, it could be 200 people. We have every industry imaginable inside Cheese Space, which is what makes it so much fun. You could have a veterinarian sitting, working right next to a cardiologist who's sitting right next to a woman who has her own construction company. I actually met the Pizza Hut hand model last week. Mm, that's so fun. <laughs> Born near Paris and raised in Kansas City, Stephanie spent her teen years as a dancer and cheerleader. She then worked for decades as an occupational therapist, married her husband Frank, had three children, and eventually earned a master's degree. When it comes to hard work, Stephanie isn't afraid to roll up her sleeves. I did. It's part of the job. As a young woman, Katie was an AAU basketball player. She then majored in math at the University of Tulsa, where she met her future husband, Seth Suru. They would later move to Houston to start their careers and a family. I worked in oil and gas with mostly men and had two kids in oil and gas. And while I loved my job, I was looking for something a little bit more that I didn't know I needed, I think, until I was mm. a mom. And that was really being around a community that understood and supported me. So that was part of the reason She Space kind of came about. There's a lot of different things that mm -hmm. happened, but Stephanie and I wanted to create a space that was warm and welcoming for all. For Stephanie and Katie, the desire to create a welcoming co-working space was personal. I was working so much from home um, and then doing what I like to call the coffee shop shuffles, like going from coffee shop to coffee shop looking for a place to meet that was quiet. It was just so unpredictable, like it was hard to be productive not knowing where I was going to have a meeting with people. And we would look around and there'd be eight other women sitting in the coffee shop working on the laptop, like looking at each other but not really interacting and we thought there has to be a better way. Stephanie and Katie believe one of the major draws to their co-working space is a desire to connect. So a lot of the women inside She Space are remote workers. I'd say about 50% are, are remote workers. A couple times a month we have women come in and say they are just so lonely. They cannot work at home by themselves one more day. 
That feeling of isolation, Katie knows all too well. Being a working mom and having kids, I went through postpartum depression, which was very difficult. Feeling very alone, I think, was the hardest part. So starting this space, I actually realized how I have not been alone in some of these struggles. Everyone has their own struggles, and I think if we all were okay with that and didn't look at it negatively, that um, people can seek treatment. And one of the great things here is we have a lot of people with different views and ideas and ways to help you if you're going through a tough time. I want people to not feel so alone. There's so many women there, there's a very good chance someone is going through the same thing you're going through or has been through it. And so you really don't ever feel alone um, if you're vocal about it and talk about it. And we talk about almost everything here. And so I think it's helped probably more women than we even know. She Space is much more than a colorful contemporary office space. It's really just spiraled into this beautiful, wonderful community of people from all places with different backgrounds. And we all are here and able to learn and support each other. It's a really fun thing to watch new friendships and relationships being formed of, of women that would most likely paths would never cross. Stephanie and Katie imagine a world with a more level playing field for anyone who's historically been left out, especially women. Until then, they'll continue building community by connecting others. It is still astounding to me that we're talking about, oh, when did women get the right to vote? And when were, when were women allowed to get a credit card? It is not that long ago. And um, we push, keep pushing forward, not just for women's rights, but just for rights for all people. Wow. So the space was built by women for women, everyone from the architect to the designer, the drywall company, no the kidding. sign company. They used about 33 different women and women-owned businesses to, uh, to make this a reality. And I'm glad Stephanie mentioned this thing about the credit cards because many of us don't realize technically women earned the right, earned the right to have a bank account or a credit card of their own in the 60s. But many banks, if you went in to try to get a credit card or open your own bank account, many banks would not allow women to open accounts without the signature Wow. of their husbands. And it wasn't until the Equal Credit Opportunity Act was packed, passed in 1974 that banks were then required by federal law to give you a bank account and a credit card if you wanted one. It's, it's insane to, to think about how, how far we've come, but also how backwards it was not that long ago. So um, kudos to what they're doing. And that's amazing that everyone involved is a, is a woman to get in this. Like, I'm not amazed that there are women construction workers and uh, women that drywall, but to make sure that every hand involved just, you know, was um, really building something extraordinary is so cool, Derek. I love that. I love that story. There's a great feeling in the space and from the lactation room to parents who bring kids in because they've had a child care emergency. Yeah. Uh, they're also pet friendly. What's not to love, right? Truly. And life is happening all the time. So like no kids, no dog. What do you mean? This is my this is my day to day life. thing. This is life. Right. So shout out to them. And um, I got to go check that space out.